This is Twit. Microsoft just kind of pulled back the curtain on several new features and, uh, I don't know, awesome additions to its AI offerings. Uh, joining us to talk about everything that Microsoft just announced is Daniel Rubino of Windows Central. Welcome back to the show, Daniel. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, I, I figured we could kick things off by talking about um, Copilot's UI redesign because the the kind of there's been a big change overall with the way that it looks and the way that you interact with it and the fact that it now has um, some very powerful voice interactions. Could you tell us about that? Sure. So when it comes to generative AI, right, these large language models. The problem right now is user engagement. So it reminds me of the old days before we had Windows 3.1 and Windows 3, right? With an actual UI, right? You would just have like a DOS prompt. Now, if you're new to computers and you sat in front of a DOS prompt, you're like, all right, what do I do next? What can I do on this thing, right? It wasn't until we had a nice UI where you could start clicking things and exploring and launching applications that computers became sort of clicked with people. So that same thing applies to these generative language models where a lot of times you just go to a screen and it's like a little prompt and that's it. And so you have to be like, oh, okay, what can I ask and what can I do with this thing, right? So what Microsoft is doing is they're changing the UI and the UX to make it more engaging, turn it more from a tool with uh, just a simple prompt to uh, an agent where something that you interact with. So like now when I launched the new Copilot app on Android, which got a refresh this week, it has this new UI and it says like, good afternoon, Daniel. And it will have a bunch of images and a bunch of things that's like kind of recommending to me that it can do and try out. So, you know, it's like if it's at nighttime, it'll be like, Hey, I can create a bedtime story for you, or I can do this, or did you know about sleep and what's the best practices for sleep? And so it's supposed to be kind of based on, uh, you know, what your habits and kind of what you're doing. So right just before this call, I launched it, said, good afternoon, Daniel. And I had a block where when I clicked it, it gave me news briefs. And it would basically go through the news that I like to read and uh, understand. And it would give me audio summaries of those. So it'd be like someone telling me a story. So that's the other half, right? The voices now. You have four voice uh, options here, two female, two males, all different kind of styles. You pick the one you like. You can, of course, switch at any time. But this agent will then tell me the news I'm interested in. Of course, you can swipe and skip it. And it's kind of cool because if it's talking about like a movie or you know, like food or something like that, it'll auto generate an AI image in the background for that as it's telling you the story to kind of give it context and more of a, an original feel. So it's a really kind of a um, the pushing, like I said, into this idea of an agent for these uh, kind of tools. So it should be rolling out to Windows 11 desktop uh, soon in the coming days. Android and iOS uh, should already have the uh, app updates already. If not, it's in the beta and it'll be coming out soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, was really impressed with everything that was announced and kind of all at the same time, how quickly it all rolled out, um, is, is, I guess I'm kind of curious at a, a sort of a pulled back view because we saw, um, open AI and its latest version of its voice features recently announced and, up to this point, we've kind of seen lockstep between OpenAI uh, and the tools that it offers and Microsoft's own Copilot because we know about the connection between the two. Uh, but increasingly, there's at least been conversations about how Microsoft is doing its own thing and, and trying to do its own thing. Um, do you feel like this is still an extension of what uh, OpenAI is offering, where, as I said, the, the new voices came around and the new voice interactions came around, and then we saw Microsoft do the same thing. Or is that kind of coincidental in your, in your thoughts? I think it's probably coincidental, uh, although you can't rule it out, right? Uh, there are close, re close relations between the two companies, there's no doubt. But I think, you know, for a lot of people, this all feels like it's been thrown together at the last minute, kind of. And, and really, that is the last year and a half of this AI story, is it has been 
just tossed together. Uh, Microsoft came out quickly with this in February and quickly launched it and they called it Bing Chat, right? Uh, and that was like kind of angle at the time. And then they changed it, they rebranded it to co-pilots and now they're doing this agent thing. So some of this is long-term planning Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe a lot of this stuff has been sort of in the works now for a couple of months because they've been quiet for the last three months in terms of new features for Copilot. But a lot of it is also just kind of course correcting along the way. I remember talking to Microsoft in February 2023 when they first launched this, and there was this internal discussion about should it be an agent, something that has like a human like quality to it that we're used to with these sort of assistants, but now powered by AI. Or should it be more just tool-like? And at first they went with tool-like, but now it's clear that they're pushing down the route of an agent. They're a little concerned about, you know, this idea that people form relationships with these AIs, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And that's kind of where the stuff goes. Some people want that, and that's kind of like the movie Her, which I've still never seen, but I'm told <laughs> this is what it's like. <laughs> uh, but it's like, you know, do we want that kind of AI? And that's kind of looks like what they're going, the route they're going down now with this. So, you know, the ideas in Windows too, when you turn on your computer in the morning, it's going to it's going to be a really smart assistant that proactively brings things to your attention. Hey, here are the emails that came in last night that are super important. Let me summarize them for you. Here's what you normally open up the first thing in the morning. You know, here's the spreadsheet. Here's a calendar appointment. And, but it's doing a lot more than that. It's acting on it. It's presenting it to you almost like a real human being would versus just like what we've had in the past, right? Siri and Google Assistant, all these kind of things have been very mechanical uh, and they're just surfacing data to you uh, versus something that's more curated. And that's really kind of what they're going here, a curated experience. Got it. Uh, the other feature that was announced is Copilot Vision. And this seems rather involved. It's a, it's a pretty cool sort of set of features, so to speak. Uh, tell us about Copilot Vision and maybe what ideas you've had about using this, this new technology. Yeah. So when it comes to AI, what we want it to do is basically help us out in life. Right now, I would say the biggest problem people have, besides trying to figure out what's true or not uh, in the world, is making sense of all the data that we are exposed to every day. That is, we see a lot of images, we see a lot of words, and the human brain only you know, can process so much of that. So this is where kind of computers come in and help you out. So we saw earlier this year, Google launched Circle to Search, where you would have any image on your phone, you hold down the uh, the little software button on the bottom, circle it, and it goes finds an image for you in related content. So this is kind of like that, but it's a little bit more. Basically, Copilot can see what's on your web browser at the time and what's on your screen. And you can kind of ask it any question about what's in that image. You know, like, what does that house look like in the background? Who is this lady? You know, um, it, is this a famous model? Like you can ask it stuff like that and it's going to be able to give you those questions as if it's like a really smart nerd who just knows everything about the world. And it can go out there and figure this stuff out and do it much more quickly. I personally find like Google's circle to search has been extremely valuable. Um, I broke an old mug I've had for 20 years uh, recently. I took a photo of it. Uh, what's left of it. And I Googled to search to see if it was still available. Can I still find this on the internet and buy it? And I could. So being I broke uh, our bed. There was a, a piece of it that broke. I did a circle to search. It's like it was the remote control for it. Like it had no part number. It was really hard to find. But I did this, found out on eBay, ordered a replacement part, right? Nice. So that is like an incredible amount of technology that we've never had before that really augments our ability to go out and you know find data make sense of things like you could just see a picture of someone's uh pants or shirt and be like i want that shirt where do i get it before you had to go into google and kind of like describe it right now you could just let the image engine do it for you and it's pretty darn accurate that's what's really cool about this yeah, that is very cool. Um, there are some updates that are coming as well to Copilot Plus PCs specifically. You mentioned mm -hmm. the kind of circle to search being called click to do. Um, could you also tell us uh, AI being used in, used in Windows search? This is something that I'm curious to hear about because this seems to be one of the most common complaints that I hear from Windows yeah. users is search kind of sucks across yep. uh, Windows. Do you think that AI is going to help this situation or are you worried that it'll kind of muddy the waters 
Yeah, no, I think this will help out. You're right. Uh, Macs have always had a better reputation when it comes to search on this system. So using AI and specifically machine learning here, it's going to be able to sift through what's on your uh, your laptop or your PC. And all this stuff, of course, is secured. BBS, it's an enclave. It's all encrypted and stuff. But basically, the benefit here is fuzzy semantics, fuzzy logic. So before mm -hmm. you had to be very specific with a very like a specific keyword, uh, the name of the file, right? You had to have that in there or something related to it that was very close, right? Now you can be like very vague on this, like whether it's documents or PowerPoint, you could just name roughly what you remember and it should go out and be able to uh, find that on your computer for you while doing that. We've already seen this, you know, with, if you have Google Photos, um, which has been really nice, uh, it could still be improved, but like if you just go in there and type dog or, you know, whatever, it's going to go through all your photos and bring up the identities of those things. Or if you bring up like um, a bar, right? It'll, it'll find all your photos. That's the same thing here, just on the PC route. So yeah, this should greatly enhance the search experience on Windows PC, which has been a big complaint for many years. Understood. And then you've got a couple more features uh, that are coming as well. Super resolution in photos okay. and then generative um, kind of fill or erase in paint. Uh, tell us about those. Yeah, so I love super resolution. Uh, I've had third party tools like this um, already. Uh, Topaz Labs makes a really kind of it's kind of expensive, but it's a software that relies on your RTX GPU. But the idea is you give it an old photo or just a low resolution photo, and it uses AI to upscale it and improve it. So right now I have to pay for that. And it's expensive. Uh, Microsoft is building it basically into uh, the photos app. So it'll be free for people to use. Now, will it be as good as like what Topaz Labs does? Probably not, right? Topaz Labs is specializing in this and it gives it a lot of options while you're doing it. But this is going to be really nice for people who have old photos or find a low resolution photo of something on the internet and they can save it and have it upscale. And this technology actually works pretty well. Um, it has sometimes issues with faces, but that's like one area that's been... Uh, that they've been really been focusing on. So I'm actually super excited about that. That's something that I think a lot of people can use, even if you put in uh, scan old like physical photos to your computer, right? Oh. This can then greatly enhance those photos. And I think that's a big thing, especially for me, I'm Gen X, like we don't have a ton of photos and especially digital ones laying around. Um, so this will be one way to sort of preserve that while also getting a better experience. Um, generative fill, erase and paint. So this is always the thing where, um, you might have an image or you're drawing something like it can, we already see this with Galaxy AI uh, technology where it fills in the background uh, where you might want to make the picture uh, 16 by nine, but it's only three by four, right? So how, what do you put in the sides there, right? Right now we're used to sort of even on TV, right? They blur out the sides or they repeat it with the, the rest of the image. Uh, this is basically going to fill in that for you and add those uh, missing objects. So again, Samsung's doing this already. Google's kind of doing this already too. Apple, I'm sure, is getting in on it. So these are standard tools. They're just going to be part of Windows though, but they'll only be used on Copilot PCs because they do rely on having the neural processing unit, which is optimized for doing this. Technically, you could do these with the GPU or CPU on the device, but on laptops, that's going to be very power intensive. And that's what they're trying to get away from. They want you to be able to do this AI stuff without sacrificing your battery or performance on the device for other tasks. Got it. Uh, Daniel Rubino, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us today to talk about the whole host of new features that are coming or have already come to many of Microsoft's uh, generative AI products and others. Uh, of course, people can go over to windowscentral.com to check out the work you're doing. Where would they go if they want to follow you online and keep up with what you're doing? Yeah, so I'm still on Twitter or X, as some people call it. Uh, that's Daniel underscore Rubino. And I'm also on threads uh, at the same address. So you can go there, follow me. I do respond to a lot of questions when people have them about this technology. So I'm pretty responsive there. But yeah, and we do the occasional Windows Central podcast as well. 
Thanks so much for watching this little chunk of Tech News Weekly. If you'd like to get the full episode, well, head over to twit.tv slash TNW. There you'll find buttons you can click or tap to subscribe to the entire show in audio and video formats. Or just look in the description. We've got links down there as well.